there, Don Monroe here. I had a client request that I thought other people might need, so I'm making a video and I hope that this helps a few of you. So my client reached out and said, hey, I want to take uh, an old number, S&P or Moody's or Bloomberg, whatever, or credit rating, and compare it with a new credit rating, but those are text and not numbers. So I don't know how to, to rank these or find greater than and less than. So I put my thinking cap on and I came up with um, a system and it's working. So I wanted to share it with you all. I'm gonna move my picture there. Basically what I did, I, I made a column of uh, a new potential uh, S&P and then uh, the old S&P that we're trying to compare these two. Did it increase? Did it decrease? Did it stay the same? And what I ended up doing was giving each rating its own numerical rank. And then I could compare the numbers. It was as simple as that. So um, over here on this rating sheet, and I'm going to pop this sheet into a shareable space in my recording here so you can have it. But what I ended up doing, uh, and I, I put a website over here. You can double check, make sure these are accurate for your own needs. But I just snagged one off the internet. But it... it included a long term and a short term uh, with the prime and, and all of that and then I added a column to give it a numerical number set uh, one being the lowest ranking and then up to uh, the level 24 here and I did the same thing and then what I did also was I selected each of these uh, arrays and I gave it a named range so there I've got Moody's um, here I'll this is the S&P range and this is the Fitch range so I selected and then clicked in there you just type the name and hit enter don't uh, put any space in it or you could also set those up on the formulas tab using the uh, name manager and defining name so once I had those, then it was really not too difficult to do the old, the good old V lookup and just pull, and I'll double click in there so you can see it. So I looked up that particular S&P credit rating, and then I pulled from the S&P table, that's the table array, I want to pull the third column back, which is that numeral I put in there. And then the false means it has to be an exact match. And if you'll recall, you may know this already, but the V in vertical means that first column it has to be uh, the uh, a vertical lookup. I'm going to go back over so you can see it. So like in any one of these groups, this one's the S&P I'm looking at. So it's looking at this array. It has to match in that first vertical column and then I'm asking it to pull the third column in as my result. So I hope that helps. Um, anyway, I'm going back here and then what I did was I used an if statement. Whoops, I haven't copied it over here. Let me copy it for you. Copy, get out of it. And here I just made a text box so I could share this with you. Let me adjust. Let me adjust and give this enough space. I think there you can still read it. So that's good. Okay, so I did that. And if you'll look what it's doing, it's comparing those two. If it's greater than, it's an increase. If it's equal to, it was no change. If it's less than, then we show a decrease. Okay, well that's awesome. And I could have stopped there. I could use conditional formatting and just come on the home tab and say conditional formatting. Hey, would you highlight if it contains text that says increase? You'll see that I could do this. 
there. Um, yeah, that's awesome. That works. You could do that, and you could do your three different levels, have three different colors there. Um, you could set that up different ways. But uh, I wanted to be fancy, and so I was playing with the icon sets because I thought an icon set would work really good for this. So what I did then is um, I put one more formula in there and you can't see the result because I actually hit it. So I'm going to go in and show you. Um, I'm going to select this first. I'm going to go in to conditional formatting. This one, um, I did it as an icon set. If you've never played with them, you could use any of those. Let's go look at it first. Here it is. Edit the rule. What I did here, there's a little checkbox, show icon only, and I have turned that on. I'm going to turn it off so you can see. Okay. Do you see I've got a 1, a 0, and a negative 1? What I did was I set up, over here on icons, I set up its own little table. If it's an increase, it's a 1. If it's a no change, it's a zero. If it's a decrease, it's minus one. And I was on this particular site that helped me figure out how to do that. It's kind of down a little bit on the page, but um, if you want to check out um, how my brain got fired up with that, you could go look at that. But so that's what I did here. That is this last formula here. And so it's going to look at that icons uh, supplement sheet I did there. It's looking at that range. Uh, be sure to lock it in with absolute values with your dollar signs. But basically what it does is it returns that series of numbers. At that point, then I could go in and add the icon set and just pick it, and it worked. You'll see I could do any of these now. Okay. Um, I like, I'm, I'm favoriting those. <laughs> But you could go in and you could go manage rules and like I did, edit that rule and then show the icon only. And I just really like the visual of that. So you could do conditional formatting uh, with uh, just colors in the cell if you want. Or you could use my little VLOOKUP trick with the 1, the 0, and the negative 1 and try that out. Anyway, this works actually pretty good. So, like if this dropped to a B plus, it shows a decrease. Take it back up, A plus increase. And all that set automatically. So once you get this set up and you fill it down, you are good to go. So I hope you like this one. I have a feeling this one's going to be uh, uh, a popular out there. So have fun. I'm Dawn Monroe. Be sure and subscribe.